Hey fellow space engineers, today I would like to share with you my design for a self-guiding missile that's perfect for hunting down enemy structures and ships and space engineers. I'll walk you through the whole process from building the actual missile to programming it for optimal destruction. Before we jump into building, we need to ask ourselves the question though, what do we want our missile to do? In a nutshell, it has to arm itself, detect and intercept enemy structures or ships, and then detonate upon impact. Now, while the missile shape is not too important, a more narrow design means fewer hitboxes. What is important though is making sure we have all the building blocks to make it work. I'll share a comprehensive list of all the functional blocks we'll be using. This way you'll know exactly what you need and it's easy to double check. As mentioned before, our missile needs a docking station. That's why we're also going to build a launcher with a projector. And this is going to make it incredibly easy to reprint missiles straight onto the launcher. During this guide, I'm going to be working in creative mode, which is going to make it a little bit easier for me and more efficient, especially while designing things. Then later we can blueprint it and then import it into our normal saves and print it. Now, before we start constructing, we should set up a little scaffolding so we have space to work around it. The easiest way is just to drop a quick landing gear on the floor. That is going to allow us to snap our building part onto it and it's going to be fixed on the floor. It means it's not going to move around and we don't have any clang issues and things like that. Now you can see it goes straight to a large grid because we are building on the large grid floor. I'm just going to press the 9 again. That is going to allow me to switch to the small grid and we can just rotate that so it is nice and flat. I'm just going to build it. Again, like I said, we are in creative. That means that everything is just going to build straight away. I'm not going to need to weld up. Now, if you're going to be building this in normal mode, you will have to weld it up. So this missile is going to be working with hydrogen. So on top of that, we're going to build a fuel tank. This one, and let's find the small hydrogen tank. And that is the one we need. Now, what I want to do, I want to make the tank on the bottom and the device on the top. And then if I build it, you will see that now we have an access point right here. And this is where we'll be able to connect on. Now, I'm going to build a second hydrogen tank on this. Now, you don't really need a second tank for this kind of missile. One hydrogen tank will be enough. If you do some calculations, you will notice that one hydrogen tank will give you, for the missile we're going to be building right now, it's going to give you about 26 seconds life. If I do two tanks, it might give me a little bit longer. It depends a bit on how quickly you are building and releasing these missiles. Because if you're building these devices on like a printer, then it will need some time to charge up the batteries and the fuel tanks so if you use two fuel tanks that is going to allow to stockpile quicker so even if the tanks are not full you will have a bigger fuel tank overall so let's build two of them on that that should be more than enough now on the back we're going to build two conveyors these small conveyors here we're going to build one two and then on the top of that we're going to go to an elbow so we want to have the reinforced elbow let me see that should be the reinforced elbow that one here we're going to build that on top of that, like that. So an elbow that points in direction like here. And in the front, we're going to put another conveyor, but then a straight one. All right, so straight conveyor like that. So this is what we want. We want one straight line to the front. All right. So these are going to be the spots where we connect our hydrogen thrusters on where we connect our connector so we can charge it. That's where we do it. And let's begin with placing a connector. And we're going to take the small connector here and we're going to place it on the bottom of this one right here. So I'm just going to rotate my uh, character. I'm using my jetpack so I can actually look on the bottom. I'm going to place it right here. Like that. So now we have the connector right here. And then on the back here, we're going to build a merge block. We should have a small one like that and we're gonna make sure that the merge block is facing downwards like this so now this connector and the merge block are gonna be what connects to your launcher which we're gonna be building later on it will become clear later when we're finishing and programming the whole thing up all right so we've done that the next thing we want to do is start with building a few thrusters so let's open up our thrusters and we're gonna take uh, these ones here we're gonna look for uh, the small thruster we're going to build one in the front. This will be our braking thrust. We're going to build one in the back. That will be our forward thrust. And then we're going to build one on the top here and one on the bottom, which is going to be two of the directional thrusts, which will uh, control, you know, the up, down, left and right. 
Then we can build two here, one on this side and one on this side. And now we, this missile has the six thrusters we need. So these six thrusters are going to control the direction uh, and the, uh, the speed of it. Now we want to build one more thruster. I'm going to change it to the, the other one so we can see the difference. And we're going to use this one here. And this is going to be my override thruster. Now the override thruster is going to push the missile forward from the launcher. Because we don't want the missile to activate straight away. We don't want it to start looking for an enemy straight away. Otherwise it might turn around and fly into your base or hit anything that you want to keep safe. So we want this override thruster to push out the missile first. Then after like two seconds activate the missile device so it starts looking for the enemy. Now, talking about looking for it, we're going to build two blocks. These are going to be the AI blocks. We need the AI flight and we need the AI offensive block. Now, the AI flight, that is the block that is going to control your missile's flight direction. And we're going to build that right here on the back. So we're going to take um, flight, which is this one here with the little rocket on top. And this one is going to control the thrusters. Now, we need to make sure that this is directed correctly. You can see there's a little R on that. That means that... This is the right side, this is not correct, so we have to rotate it so it sees left. You can see here as well, it says front, so we just need to make sure that that points to the front of the missile. And I'm also building it right here, so it's a little bit in the center of where the connector is, so it has a bit more of a stable control over where it's aiming at. We're also going to build a uh, battery, and we're also going to build, of course, the offensive block, which is this one here. That one will have the little crosshair on top. That is the offensive block. That is the one that's going to look for your enemies, uh, target them, and then control your flight to say that is where we have to go. So we're going to build that one right here. Then we're going to build a battery. And I'm going to build that battery in between. Here. Makes a little bit noise, but that's okay. That is just going to activate the whole thing. This is not going to cost you any hydrogen, so don't worry about that. Another thing we need to build is a gyro, because the gyro is of course needed to control the balancing of that missile. So we're going to build a gyro on the front here. And it doesn't really matter how you place it, so we're just going to place it like this. And that is what we need here. Alright, so this is how the missile looks like for the moment. Now it's time to start installing the timer blocks. We need some event controllers as well, which is going to control when everything starts to happen. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to our event controller and that should be here, I think. And we're going to build one event controller on this side. And I'm going to build one event controller on the other side. Like that. Then we're going to build two timer blocks. I'm going to build one timer block. I'm going to build one timer block, one here, one here. And we're going to build one timer block on this side here. Now, one more thing we want to place as well is a sensor, and that we're going to place in the front here. And there is a little arrow, if you look at it, there's like a little arrow on that sensor. If you look at it here, that is the top of your uh, sensor. I'm going to place it here against this timer block, so it's a little bit to the back. Now, we're going to build eight warheads, and these warheads we're going to place in the front. And I'm just going to color them, put some red on that. So, one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight warheads, that's a pretty decent boom for uh, this missile. Now, some players do like to have an antenna on their missile. They like to have a camera and a control block, so they actually can take control over the missile themselves. Uh, you can do that, you can replace one of the fuel tanks with all that, but then you will have to also make sure that the front thruster has been lined up. But I think that's it. This is the structure of the missile. So I'm just going to show you the left and the right so you can double check like did I miss anything. This is the right side. This is the left side. And of course, don't forget the sensor in there as well. All right, now that we have done that, let us focus now on the launcher. And then we know which blocks we have on both sides. So you also understand when I'm programming what is going to happen. So let's build another landing gear. Now we're going to start with a conveyor. 
And why we do we need a conveyor is because we want to make sure that this launcher, when we build it, when we print it, whatever, it has a connection point where we can connect to later. So we are sure that we can charge our batteries, charge our fuel station. So we're going to build one conveyor here. And then on top, we're going to build just a straight pipe. We don't need the whole conveyor thing. So one pipe is enough like that. On top, we're going to build our connector again. And then here, we're going to build our merge block. Then below it, we're going to put a timer block. And then finally, here, we're going to build an event controller. I prefer to do it in such a way so I can see the screens, what is going on. And on the back here, we're going to build a projector. And what I want to do, I want to build my projector in such a way that we have the... You see this plus here? There's like a cross on top of your projector. We want this to point upwards. And then we have this line. Make sure that the line points toward me. That's like the back of the projector and the cross as the top of the projector. All right. So this is our launcher. As you can see, we have a connector and a merge block. That's going to line up with that merge block and this connector. You can see they have the same position. All right. So when we're going to be printing then, when we're going to put this missile as a blueprint in this projector, it's going to snap on top of that and then we'll be able to print this missile every time on top of that launcher. The next thing we want to do, we're going to start programming and naming all our blocks. For that, I'm going to go to my uh, panel. We need this one here. Like that. Uh, this is temporary. We don't want to keep that. We're going to throw this away after we're done. We just want these to program the whole thing. So I'm going to build one here. And I'm going to build one against here as well. So then we can use this control panel to program the whole thing. So let's start with programming this one here. Let's go in here. First of all, we want to name all these so we see the difference. So each of these blocks we have here is part of the launcher. Except for, of course, this control panel. This will be removed later on. So if I go to the automation timer block, we can go in the front and we can say launcher. And then we will see the difference between our missile and our launcher when we want to check things. Now, if you're going to build this in like in batches and you want to build several next to each other, these will all be named launcher. So you might have to go in there then and all rename them to launcher one, launcher two, launcher three. It is definitely important that you can see the difference between which launcher you're using. Also, if you want to fire your missiles in salvos. I am using a mod which is going to allow me to just do this all at once. So I'm just going to take all of these. I'm going to say launcher. There we go. Space prefix. So now all of them have been named. Now we're going to start with giving all these blocks a name. So we also see the difference between which is for what. Now to make this video take a little bit less time. Here is a list of all the blocks and how I renamed them. So you can double check yourself how you want to name them. All right. Let's start with... Uh, setting up our event controller we're gonna go open here we're gonna open up our event controller and we're gonna say i want to check if the merge block is merged so the event we want to check is is the merge block merged and if you go in here you will find the block it's called merge block merged there's one available merge block which is the one here i'm gonna say add this block so now this is added and then we can say now i want to give an action so i want to say if the merge block is merged then the action is, and now we select that. And here we see this is true, this is false. So that means we want to place something in here and say, if the merge block is merged, this is your action you need to do. So in here, we're going to take our timer, which is this one here, connector lock. We're going to pull that in in slot one. And here we're going to choose start, which means it's going to initiate the countdown of the timer. That's start. If you do trigger now, it's immediately going to do what timer was supposed to do. So we want to have a countdown, which is start. There we go. That's all we need to do. We can now go back and we can go to our timer block. And we're going to put the timer block on a two second delay. That means that when the event controller finds that the merge block is merged, it then sends that signal to the timer. The timer will count down two seconds. And then we're going to set up our action and say lock connector. That's all we need to do here. All right. 
So now, when we print the missile, there will be a merge block, which you can see um, right there, the one that behind the control panel. That one is going to be printed on top of this merge block. Now, the merge block automatically is going to merge. As soon as there's a merge block, it's going to connect and merge together. That means that the event controller sees that, says, OK, merge block is connected. It sends a signal to the timer. That timer starts counting down. In the meantime, the connector should be printed as well which then is going to be on top of the other connector. That means that this connector now can connect and the whole missile is set and ready to be released later on. Because now we're going to be setting up this missile that when it detects the connector is disconnected, it activates the whole sequence. Let's now focus on this one right here. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually is set up the sensor because this thing is already starting to bother me. So let's open up our menu. Let's go to info and we're going to see here, there should be show sensors field range. We're going to select that like this. Then we're going to open up this menu, this control panel. We're going to look for our sensor. And we're going to say show on HUD. There we go. Now, if you look outside, you will see that is the sensor radius now. So as soon as I walk in this, is detecting what I'm doing. So we're going to adjust that so it only detects in front of the missile. Let's uh, first of all rename all these so this is going to be missile. So I'm going to select all these and if you are not having this mod you will have to do each of them separately. I'm just going to do it like that. I'm going to call this uh, missile prefix. There we go. I don't need to worry about that. The next thing I want to do is also group these warheads. There we go. So that's just easier than later to trigger them on and off. Uh, we do have the control panel that I'm, I don't need. So let's remove that one. And then we also have the landing gear. Let's remove that one as well. So we don't see the difference. These are going to be removed later on. All right, let's go to the sensor. And we're going to... Let's see if we can go a little bit further so I can see where the sensor is aiming at until... There we go. So now I can see uh, a little bit more at the, the distance from my missile. And we're going to go to our center and we're going to adjust the um, the extents. So we're going to reduce the left extent. As you can see there, you can see it removing or shortening. So let's do this on one meter. Let's do the right extent to two meters, I would say, or 0 0.3. Let's wait. Let's see what it does. Let's do the same here. And let's do the top extent as well, like that. And then the back extent, like this. All right, so now we can have a look what we actually want to do. So what I would like to do is have this whole missile and the front of it detect the enemy. So I'm going to make a like a cube in front of that, extend that cube in front of it. So we can drop our bottom extent one down and then we can move this to the left two. So let's go to the sensor again. Go to uh, bottom extent. We're going to go to that. Uh, I think, was it 0 0.7? I think that should be okay. Then right extent. I think that might be it. Let me just double check. Now we can reduce it just a little bit more. One point two. I think that should be okay. Now the back extent I'm gonna reduce as well because I don't want this thing to <laughs> measure in the back. We want this to measure in the front, and the front extent I'm gonna put on. I think eight point five meters. I can just type it in eight point five. There we go. So that should be a nice long distance for detection. That means as soon this thing detects here, it's gonna activate or detonate the warheads. If you feel like, you know what, this is too early, you can adjust this extent to be shorter or to be longer so that the time between the uh, detection and the explosion is shorter or longer. But I think that is okay. All right, so let's open up the sensor again. I'm going to do some changes as well because we don't want this to 
uh, detect anything else except for the enemy. So audible, let's leave it on so we can hear it. Detect players on, yes. Detect flow, no. Small ships, yes. Large ships, yes. Detect stations, yes. Subgrids, off. Detect asteroids, off. Detect owner, off. We don't want to be able to detect it ourselves. We don't want friendlies or neutrals to be attacked by that. We only wanted to detect enemies. And that should be it. So let's begin with the beginning. We want to make sure that our warheads are disarmed. So let's check our warheads should be disarmed. If you check them here, you can see none of these are armed. So we'll leave them completely disarmed. We only want these warheads to be armed when it leaves the bay. So I think it's time to start naming all of these first. And once again, I'm just going to list the blocks here with all the renaming for the missile. And there we go. Now everything should be a little bit clearer on what is what. Time to start programming. So the first thing we're going to set is the event controller. That is the launch sequence. So what do we want this event controller to do? We want this event controller to detect when the connector of the missile is disconnected. And when that happens, it launches the missile. So the event controller is the first step of all of it. So we're going to go to the event setup. Event. And we're looking for connector connected. So this is going to check is the connector connected or not. There is one connector on this missile. So let's add that to the selected blocks. As you can see, for the moment, it is disconnected. Now we go to select actions. So now we want to select the action and say, if you detected all that, now you're going to act upon this. And what do we want to do? We want this to start our first timer block, the timer block that is actually doing the launch step one. Now we're going to put this in slot two, because remember, this is true. This is false. So this means connector connected, connector disconnected. All right. So we look for the timer block, which is the timer block um, uh, launch step one. I'm going to pull this one in slot two. Now we're just going to do trigger now. The reason why we're doing this is just because this timer block is functioning purely as a collector of all the actions we want to do at once. This is a pretty easy way to do this. We just say act on all these. You will see what I mean in a second. So let's go to timer block one. And then we're going to doesn't really matter. We can put a delay on one second just to be sure, but it doesn't matter here. And we're going to go to setup actions. And now you can see there's like a whole list here. I can actually put a whole bunch of actions in here and all this one timer block. So this timer block is like a collection of all the actions at once. So now we want this timer block to control the first launch step. So what it's going to do as soon as timer block one has been triggered, it's also going to trigger the countdown of the time block 2. And we're going to say start. Next, we want to make sure that our override thruster is enabled. I'm going to go in here. And we're going to say toggle block on. Now, as you can see, my override thruster is actually on right now. We're going to have to turn this off. So we have to remember that. Next, we want to enable our battery. We're going to slide it in here. And we're going to say enable auto. Because we're going to put this battery on recharge before we make a blueprint. So that means when this whole thing is printed out, it's going to be recharging. It's going to be restocking the fuel and then it gets released. That means we also have to put the two missile tanks in here and we're going to have to say stockpile off. And the same here. This is one. Let's take that one here and say stockpile off. Because we're going to set these on stockpile on when we're done. We also want to unlock the connector. I'm going to place this in here and I'm going to say unlock. And this is just a safeguard. So normally the connector should be already unlocked before, but we just want to make sure that this happens when, you know, anything goes wrong. You never know the timer takes a problem and the connector takes over again. We just want this connector to unlock again. And the same with the merge block. We want to take the merge block and I'm going to say toggle block off. So it's no longer connected to the merge block of the other one. And then we also need one more, and that is the timer block for our warheads. So we're going to put that in here and say start. So this is going to trigger the timer to arm the warheads. Now, remember, we need to set these all up, so it might be smarter to do this right now. So let's open up the thruster, batteries and the hydrogen tanks. 
So let's go to the override thruster. We're going to turn this block off. And we're going to put the thrust override on maximum. Like that. Then we go to our hydrogen tank. We're going to say stockpile on. And hydrogen tank 2. Stockpile on. Then we go to the battery. And we're going to say recharge. So now this is all set up. We go to the next launch step. Which is launch step 2. This is this timer block. Now this one we're going to put on a 2 second delay. Because we want this to take a little bit of time before it takes over. So timer block launch step 2. 2 second delay. Setup actions. Now in here we're going to make sure that the override thruster is turned off again. So we make sure that it is toggle block off. Then we also toggle on both the AI blocks. We're going to take this one here. AI flight. Put it in here and say toggle AI behavior on. Take that one, put it in here and say toggle AI behavior on. And then one more thing we need to do is also toggle on the event controller end of life. So we take the event controller, which is the end of life. Go in here and say toggle block on. And this event controller is going to check when the missile is dead in the water. If there's no more fuel, it's just going to explode. So we don't have any missiles floating in the sky. We just want to get rid of it. Now this is done, we have to remind again that we set these right. So now we're going to go to the AI blocks and set these. Go to the AI flight, make this AI off. This block can be staying on, so we're good here. And this is on and the AI is off. We come back to that later in a second. I just want to make sure that we also set up warheads. So we're going to put our warheads on a two seconds delay or a one second delay should be enough. One second delay. Set up actions and we're going to go to our groups and we have this warhead here. We're going to bring that here and say arm warhead on off. Now there is no option to choose between on and or off. It's just on and off. That means we need to make sure that the missile is set disarmed when we blueprint it so that when it is activated it arms the warhead. End of life. Let's do that one as well. So what we want to do here is have the event controller checking our hydrogen tanks. So there should be a gas tank filled. This is the one we're looking for. We want to say equal or less than, and then we're going to say 0.1%. So once this is going equal or lower than 0.1, this is going to trigger this event controller too. Uh, we also have to put these tanks in here. So select both of them and add the blocks into here can see that my hydrogen tanks are now at 66 and 33. I also have to set this to ant, ant gate. Because otherwise if I don't do that and one of the tanks goes empty, it's going to explode. So we have to do ant. So both of these tanks have to be at 0.1%. Then go to select actions, go to groups, select the warheads and say detonate. That means when the tank is empty, it's going to explode the whole thing. All right, now it's time to set up our AI blocks. Now the AI blocks is what is going to control the whole shebang. We're going to start with the AI flight. As you can see, we are still on on. That's okay. We want to toggle our AI behavior later on and off. Collision avoidance off. This is a missile. We want this thing to hit. So off. Precision mode off. We don't want this to be uh, trying to hit the perfect spot. We just want to aim and hit the thing. Speed limit, full blast. We want this to go 100 meters per second. Minimum altitude, this depends a bit on what you're doing. If you're doing this on a planet, you want this to set, uh, set this up. If you're using your missile for space, this is not that important. Now, I'm going to put this on 1 meter because I want this missile to be able to go low. Because you want this missile to hit the tank, you want it to hit the building, you want to hit a rover. If you want it to go low, you will have to put the minimum altitude to 1. Uh, yes, to align gravity if you're working on a planet. You want this to be stabilized. Space, it doesn't matter. You can turn this off. You will also see it will turn off your pitch angles as well. But for planetary warfare, you want this to align with the planetary gravity. And that's it. That's number 1. We can now go to the AI offensive. Block is on again. Yes, AI behavior is off, which is okay. We attack enemies. Uh, yes, please. What are we looking for? The closest or the largest? 
To be honest, I prefer to go for the largest. That is the one we want to hurt. If you go for the closest, then it might also go for a drone. Uh, we're going to put the interval on 10 seconds. That means that every 10 seconds, it's going to look for an enemy. That means, let's say it finds a large ship and it goes towards the large ship and 10 seconds, it finds a larger one. It will go and aim for that one. That means also that if your tank runs empty in that search, it will explode on the way. So that might be something you want to play around with yourself. Threatening system. We want this to be default. Attack pattern. We do not want to circle the orbit. We want to intercept, hit, damage. That's what we want to do it. So intercept. Guidance system is going to go for basic. Target prediction is very unreliable because it kind of tries to calculate where the enemy is going to and it does miss it a lot. So I prefer to keep it on basic. Override collision avoidance, it's a good one to leave. That means that it's also going to turn off the AI flight collision avoidance. So it's just going to go for it. And I think that's it. I think we set up our whole missile. All right. Now we want to blueprint this missile to test it out. Now I'm in creative. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to copy this one. Blueprint the copy because I want to take away the landing gear. Later on, when I'm happy with the missile, I can do some adjustments on that one. I want to close it off. I want to put some nice armor so it also protects this uh, missile a little bit better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste this right here. There we go. So then I can take this away. And then we can blueprint this missile to test it out. So now I've, I did already set up a, uh, a printer for me so I can do this later on. So what we're going to do, we're going to break this one. We're going to take this landing gear away. Stay. Okay, let's um, make sure that it stays straight. Stay. There we go. Now we're going to take away this panel. Because we do not want this panel on this missile. We're going to blueprint it. Small grid. Here it is. Rename. Just rename this to missile 1.0. There we go. All right, so now we have this missile 1.0. I can go to here. I take my projector. And I want to add blueprints. Now, the problem is I don't have a battery on this thing. So we want to put a battery on that. Go into our menu. Go to our projector. Blueprints. We're going to take our missile. Test 1.0. Keep projection. Otherwise, every time your missile is printed, it's going to delete the projection from the projector. So we want to keep it so the next time it prints it again. Now, we need to adjust the position. This seems to be the back, so we're good here. So let's uh, lift it up until it reaches that block there, like that. And then we're going to move it forward so it moves the connectors on the same spot. And there we go. And as you can see now, the merge block is on the merge block. The connector is on the connector. That means that now this whole thing is ready to be printed. I'm going to take my battery away. There we go. So this is now my launcher. I'm going to blueprint this one. The, this one right here. We're going to rename this. We're going to call this launcher test 1.0. Now I'm going to put this on my printer system here. So you kind of can see how this works. If you want to copy this over. This is how I set it up. We have two large grid welders. Then I used a rotor, changed the rotor to a small head and then built small grids on top of that. Then split up to the left and the right. So we have a left arm and a right arm. Um, and here you can see this is a um, conveyor. So here we have a T then goes to the left and the right. That conveyor will feed to my block, so we are able to charge, we are able to fuel our missile. This isn't creative, it doesn't really matter, but this is definitely an example if you want to work with that. I'm going to go into this control panel, we're going to go to projector right, blueprints, and we're going to look for launcher. We're looking test one. There we go. Now we want to rotate that, I think. Let me see. No, we don't want to rotate. We will just shift it. We want this one here. We want this to connect on that pipe. All right. So we just need to move it forward. Uh, projector right. Forward. I think that's the one, no? Yeah, there we go. 
So now we need to weld this up. Now the advantage of this large grid welder here, it does have a big radius so we can weld up the launcher as well. So we can just press the welder. And it already starts welding up my missile as well. Now it did not connect my connected though. All right, what I'm going to do, let me just manually lock this. It could be because it welded up the wrong thing at the same time. So let's just switch lock. There we go. We'll try it again. So I'm going to turn off my welders now. Now, to be able to activate this missile, we need to be able to disconnect the connector. And it's easy to just have a quick test button here. So we're going to build a test button that is going to deactivate the connector. Put this button here say this button just uh, disconnect the launcher like unlock there we go so it means if i press this button it's gonna unlock this one and that should activate my missile there we go a new projection has been placed i'm gonna delete this one because we don't have anything to test it all right now i want to print i want to see if this connector connects otherwise i made a mistake all right there we go connector just went on Good. This is working. So if you're building this, I would advise you to build this launcher manually and then later on have your welders print up the missile. Now we want to test this missile on an enemy. So for that, I'm going to fly about 1000 meters away. That should be okay. Now we're going to open up our blueprints. I have a ship that I built, which is not too amazing, but it should work. Intruder. There we go. I'm going to jump in the cockpit. We're going to go to our information. We're going to go to control panel. That's what we're looking for. Control panel. We're going to select all of this. Transfer to. Space pirates. Yes. Now it's going to kick me out of the ship. Because this is now an enemy ship. As you can see, this is now red. That means that this is now a viable target for our missile. All right. I'm going to press the button. Okay, it detected. Great. Let's see how long it takes before this thing explodes. Alright, now this seems like we still have a little bit of a piece left, although it's gone. That's a, that's a good thing. The ship is still floating. To be honest, this intruder is better than I expected. Still floating. But it definitely did a nice number on it. Alright, now what I'm going to try to do, I might try to extend my sensor array a little bit. So there should be only one sensor, so just let's go to this panel here. And let's find sensor. And see if I extend this to, for example, uh, let's say 10. Alright. Not bad. Alright, so 10 meters seems to be a better choice. So we might just adjust that in the blueprint. Alright, so now that we know all that, we can delete this one. We're going to program this to have a longer sensor range. So we're going to go to the sensor. And we're going to extend that sensor rate to 10 meters. There we go. And now we can delete this block. And that is our missile. So the only thing we need to do now is we're going to make some armor around it. Also, we will remove the landing gear. And then once the blueprint is done, we're going to put this on this launcher. Make a blueprint of that. And that is going to be our finished product. Now, you can decide yourself a little bit what design you want your missile to have. I like the nice and sleek ones. This is the ones I like to make a nice curved missile. And what I'm going to do... I'm going to make sure that we have only from here, because in the front, I want to build heavy armor, just to make it a little bit more stronger against any attacks. So, and also, what I do like uh, is give it a little bit of a, a shine. Okay. There we go. So now we have a nice one here. 
Now we're going to go to our heavy armor. In the front, we're going to make our curve. And then here, we're going to go change the color because I a little bit of aggressive design. Let's still go to defaults, go to red. You might actually go for plastic. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Let's go for heavy armor plastic in the front. And that should be it, I think. Then in the back here, we're going to go to normal again. I'm going to put one here. One here. There we go. And now we're going to put some plate in the front here as well. Put all plates in front of that, except, of course, in front of the engine. We don't want the engine to be covered. There we go. Do the same on this side. Do the same on the top. There we go. Now, I want to do the same on the bottom. The problem is I do have some landing gear there. So uh, we might have to um, rotate this with creative mode. Uh, we don't want to block anything here. Let's just delete this landing gear. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this for a second. I'm going to rotate it so I can look at the bottom. Put some plates on that. Uh, six. Uh, this we don't want to cover. So now we can copy this again. Rotate it back up like that. Are you really going to rotate? Come on. Go straight. We go. Now we can delete these. Yes. And can delete that one. Yes. Alright. So now that we have this missile completely ready. We're going to put the battery back here. We're going to go to... Uh, first of all, we're going to blueprint this one. And we're going to rename it. We're going to call this now Self-Guiding Missile. One point five. This is just a test because if we're happy with it, we can then, of course, completely name it as we want it. Go to the projector. Blueprints. Now you can see I already have one here, but this is the one we want to use. Keep projection. Yes. And this is perfect. Now we can delete this block again. That is our um, launcher. We're going to blueprint this one as well now. And we're going to call this, rename it now. Launcher. 1.5. Now, the thing is, this launcher can be used for different missiles. This means you don't need to always make these launchers. Once you have made one, you just build a missile on the same style, knowing that the connector works like this, and then you can just use the same launcher. We're going to put this on the left one. Projector left. We're going to go to blueprints. Uh, 1.5. Keep projection, of course. And now we need to, of course, adjust it. Projector left. Let's start with uh, lifting it up. Like that. And then we rotate it. Uh, let's pitch it. Like that. And then bring it forward. I think that was okay, no? So now we have this, this, this. This is the same. Yes. Now, as you remember, we're going to weld this up with a hand, not with the welder. Otherwise, it's going to weld up the whole missile again and we don't have the connector working. So let's just weld it by hand. There we go. So now we have this set up. Uh, I still need to take this off. I forgot that. So if we make a blueprint that is going to be complete, we need to remove that uh, console panel. So we are sure that this is not uh, there anymore. Let's turn on the left welder. Ah, oh, look at that beauty. Let's just double check if everything has been welded. Everything has been welded. And that's about it. Most likely you will need to experiment a bit with the ranges and the times yourself. See if you can improve on the damage. 
It also will depend if you use this on servers or you use this in your solo playthroughs, but I'm sure all the information I shared today should get you going. I am planning on releasing this design on the workshop after I fiddled with it myself a little, and when finished I'll drop the link in the description. Anyway, I hope this guide was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again next time. Beautiful bum, out.